Today is February 25th, 2014. We are interviewing um, Adam Martinez. Adam it was born February 21st, 1956. Um, my name is Cheryl Walker and I'll be interviewing. Mr. Martinez, could you state for the record what war and branch of service you served in? I served in the United States Army and I was in Desert Storm. And what was your rank? Sergeant when I got out. Okay. And the service dates that you served in was November 1975 to June of 1982 and August of 1987 to August 1991. You, um, your highest rank was Sergeant E5. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you served um, in Fort Hood, Texas and Saudi Arabia in Iraq. Is mm -hmm. that correct? Yes. Okay. At this point in time, would you like to sh share your history? Well, um, I was actually wanted to go into the Marines when I was 19. I was kind of lost, uh, wanted to do something with my life. And I talked to my brother who was in, uh, in the Army in, in Vietnam, my brother Art. And he says, you don't want to do that. He says, go to the Army. It's not going to be as, as rough on you. So I did. In uh, 1975, I uh, enlisted in the Army, uh, was stationed at uh, Fort Gordon, Georgia, which ironically, back in the days, it was called Camp Gordon, Georgia, and my father was trained at Camp Gordon, Georgia. So I wound up being taken my basic training at the same uh, fort. Um, after that, I did my AIT in uh, Fort Dix, New Jersey, and I was a radio operator. And then I got stationed overseas in Germany and spent almost four years there working as a radio operator. I re-enlisted while in Germany, and then I came back for a computer information school at Fort Harrison, Indiana. And then I wound up getting stationed at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, working at a data processing field office. Um, I then, the last part of my second re-enlistment, I uh, was then stationed at Fort Sheridan uh, with the Midwest Re Region Recruiting Command. I got out of the service uh, pretty idle for about a year. And then for four years, I worked as a um, data entry clerk at, for an insurance company. And then I got the itch to go back in, in the military. So in August 1987, I went back in, um, went back to Fort Gordon, uh, Georgia for training. Um, then, I was stationed at, I, then I was stationed at Fort Hood. And from Fort Hood in 1990, that's when we uh, we, we departed for, um, in October 1990, we departed for Saudi Arabia and then eventually the Desert, Desert Storm War. And it, Iraq, we, I was in Iraq too. So. So you were in two different times. Mm -hmm. Two different, two different Conflicts. Well, one conflict. One conflict. Just, just Desert Storm. Okay. The first time there was, there was, you know, nothing was going on, okay. like a war. Okay. Um, so I have to ask you. When you were stationed, you were stationed over there. Yes. Um, how you were in at a time that the uniforms changed. Yes. How was that for you? Well, uh, the uniforms when I first went in used to have the khakis and they used to starch them like heck and then you sit down and they'd be all wrinkled. Uh, the utility uniforms were, they were all right and you know we had baseball caps we wore then 
But when I went in the second time, I I, I kind of liked the utilities that they had now. The the battle dress uniforms with the camouflage and and all of that and that that looked a little bit better as far as uniforms go. Now the class day stood the same. Your dress uniforms stood the same, but the, that was it. The utilities are the ones that had just about changed. What about the boots? Uh, the boots. Um, yeah, the boats were different also. Um, actually, when we were in Desert Storm, we wound up getting desert boots out there. Uh, so, And I still have them. Uh, I only wore them a few times, and I still have them. They're like brand new. Okay. You didn't have to spit shine them? No. No, they were suede, like a suede material. Were they comfortable? Oh, yes. Yes. Were they a lot com more comfortable than the oh, yes. black one? Yes. Yes. Yes, I don't know why, but they were. I guess maybe the way the soles and the heels were made in the inside part, too. Okay. Um, did you keep any kind of diary? I did. I did. During Desert Storm, I, I did keep a diary. Uh, from the time we, the day we departed until uh, we got back. And it was sometimes a few words here and there, sometimes a little bit more lengthy, you know. Um, I let my nephew read it one time, and he found some of it amusing because there is some... It wasn't all bad out there, you know. We had some good good times out there, but... Uh, uh, but it, 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 I do have... I have the diary, uh, and uh, it's, in, it's in a safe place. I don't want to live or lose that. That's... that's that's interesting that you say you had a diary and the reason I say that is because not many people did right. keep a diary. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Thank you. And yes, people that say that they're, it isn't amusing is wrong. It, it is amusing. Yeah, you can have some good times and we did. Yeah. We played uh, before the actual ground where I actually started uh, on Thanksgiving we had a uh, football game um, and me and some of the other soldiers we hitched a uh, this piece these big pieces of wood to the back of a pickup truck and we went up and down the sand to try to level it out and then we took water bottles filled them with sand and used those as our 10 yard markers and so it was like uh, the headquarters team against the first platoon team. And headquarters, they came out with cheerleaders and everything. And But we we beat them. And uh, I, my lieutenant at the time, I spoke to him not too long ago on Facebook. And he says that, and I don't remember this, he said that there was a film crew out there from uh, CBS or NBC or something and that he's got film of us of us playing this football game so I've been haggling him haggling him about, about getting a copy of it so he he says it's in a box somewhere in his basement and he's he's trying to try to find it for me that's interesting yes it was it was it was interesting it was we played volleyball you know it was like I said it wasn't all sitting around waiting for something to happen you know you, you made you made best but best that you could what was what was the sleeping conditions the 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 they the well the majority of the soldiers we had these huge tents they, and they would sleep in, in their tents on cots um i was sleeping i i had a trailer and i had my cot in there and um, made it as homey as possible. We would get our MRE boxes, uh, you know, for the meals ready to eat, and the box would slide out of this other box that was covering it. Well, once you got two or three of those and you poke a couple holes in the box and put a piece of string in there, well, now you got a drawer. So socks, T-shirts. <laughs> underwear things like that so you had about three of them stacked up and you had your little dresser right there so it's being creative being very creative hmm. Mm -hmm. now how come you got a trailer to sleep in well because uh i had a hard time we were working shifts and it was hard for me to sleep because i'd be going to bed and 
people will be uh, waking up or other people will be getting off shift and then they're playing radios and stuff like that. Well, in the trailer, what happened eventually was my uh, platoon sergeant came and told me that the the ca uh, commander, the captain, wanted a, nobody sleeping in the trailer. So I reluctantly went into the tent for a couple days, and what did he do? He moved into the trailer. So next to it was a pickup truck with a shelter on it, I moved right in there, <laughs> and I slept on a, a, a communications metal rack. So we had a little rubber uh, roll-out mattress and then a sleeping bag. And so that's that's what I did. After he told me I, I couldn't be in there, he goes and moves inside there. He liked your sleeping conditions. Yeah, yeah. Um, how was it staying in touch with your family? Um, most of it was done, almost all of it was done by just writing, uh, letter writing. Um, when the, uh, when the war was over <clears throat> and us being in communications, we had to stay up front so all the other units could come back and make sure we had communications for them. So it was pretty lax then. Uh, so one day, the communication system we had, you can actually call back to the States. So here I'm in the desert in Iraq, and I call my sister's house. And she says, Adam? She says, where are you at? I said, I'm in Iraq. She says, no, you're not. You got to be down the block. You're coming in crystal clear. You got I said, Andrea, I'm in Iraq. <laughs> so she didn't believe me. So, but she did after after a while. She couldn't help but have to believe me because that's where I was. So uh, that was all right. Um, and yeah, but most of it was uh, uh, letter writing, letter writing. So you know, letters all the time. Did you get care boxes? Oh yes, oh yes. Uh, um, uh, from my family, I got care boxes from a group of uh, middle school kids at a, a school in Florida. Um, uh, it was uh, Bunnell, Bunnell, Florida, near Day Daytona uh, Beach, and. The thing about that is, is that prior to going over, uh, leaving for Saudi Arabia, in the Fort Hood newspaper, there was like seven letters from kids, these kids from this school, who wrote supportive things. So I wrote each one of them back, each individual kid I wrote back. Well, about a week before we leave, I get this envelope, manila envelope, and it's about that thick. And there's like 40 letters in there. And I wrote each and one of the kids back. And so we kept up, they they were writing to me too. Uh, and like, like I said, I, I would get maybe 20 here or 10 there or 15 here, but I made sure to write them all, all back. Well, uh, like I said, then they sent me some care packages, and I think I let me see. I got one teacher. They they sent me a a teacher a t-shirt, uh, and I put it on just for the heck of it that day. Um, and after I uh, when everything had settled down, I did talk to the a uh, write to the teacher, and I told him I said. When I get a chance, I'm going to take a three-day weekend, and I'm going to come and come and visit you. And he said, uh, "Okay, we'll we'll arrange that." And he said, yeah, "You'll be able to stay at my place." So I did. I put in for the leave, flew down to Florida. Well, Daytona Beach Airport, they actually still roll out the staircase for you to walk off of because it's not a very big, big airport. So I see a cameraman and the guy with a microphone out there and I'm like I'm thinking maybe there's a 
somebody famous or a sports player on the plane that they're going to interview. So I waited till everybody got off, and then here I come walking down, and the uh, guy with the microphone comes up, he introduces himself, and he says, I'm so-and-so from, I think it was NBC affiliate down there in Florida. He says, uh, we're doing a piece on you. And I'm like, whoa, you know, he said, now, could you just wait? We're going to go back into the, into the concourse, and then I'll wave you in when I, I, and we'll have the cameraman set up, having you come in into the concourse. So he waves me in and I come in and here's all these kids that were writing to me with balloons, plaques, all kind of stuff. And it was great. We, I got to go to the school. I went there one day in my, my dress uniform. I brought them gifts. I bought them patches, posters, anything that I can get from the publicity department at Fort Hood that they give me for free to hand out to these kids. So. They all got something, you know. Again, and and it, it was a great it was a great feeling. And spent the time, like I said, uh, with the uh, teacher and his and his wife. Um, he he participates in Civil War reenactments, and he's a rebel soldier. So I figured I'd get him back, and I wound up buying him the cavalry stetson, the black one <laughs> with the cross swords and the gold braid. So I said, you got to have this for your collection. Uh, for the school, I bought a replica uh, 1800s saber with a scabbard and a plaque. And they they put that right in, when they walk into the school, there's a display case and put it on there. And I said, you know, dedicated to the students and faculty of Bunnell Middle School, you know, Sergeant Adam Martinez on there. And that's, this, that's displayed there now. So it was it was a it was a wonderful thing. Interesting. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. Thank you. And what grade was this? They were like about to say fifth and sixth grade. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I still correspond with one of the one of the girls, um, and uh, she moved from Florida and she lives up here in, up, uh, up in Michigan now and we haven't seen each other since I was down there that last time and we want she wants me to get we want to she wants to get together with me and and her husband when, when I get the time sometime <laughs> that's fantastic So that would be pretty much a memorable experience of, oh, yes. of something that happened while you were over there. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you carry anything for, around for good luck? No, no, not really. Okay. No. Did you have plenty of supplies? Yes, we... Mm, Yes, we did. We were never really short on anything, you know. We you got one hot meal a day and or breakfast sometimes, uh, but mo you know. And then you had your MREs to eat, and you know, it, it wasn't the it wasn't it wasn't bad as far as the accommodations go for eating and and everything else. It was just the long hours of the day that, you know, you're working 12-hour shifts, and that, you know, took a, takes a little toll on you. Were you allowed to go out of the compound area? We used to go, when we were still in Saudi Arabia, we used to go to, uh, there was this little, little tiny town, uh, and it had, a like, a grocery store, and you spelled cookies and soda and and then they also had, would have uh, uh, chicken uh, uh, kebabs and rice. So that gave us a chance to eat something entirely different from what we were getting, uh, you know, from on the military side. So that's about it. You know, we weren't, uh, you were pretty much accountable for wherever you went. You know, you go there, you got this much time, you got to be back, you know. So... That's that's the way that worked. So you really did you get a leave while you were over there? Oh no, 
No. No ways? No. When we got there in October, we didn't, I didn't come back stateside until we came back in April. Okay. Do you recall your day, the day that your service ended? Mm. Yes. Yes, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, it was, uh, August, I want to say 9th or something like that. And when I landed at, um, landed at Midway Airport, and I was in my dress greens, and you go through the tunnel, tunnel thing there, and all my brothers and sisters, their husbands, their wives, all their kids, and my ma were all there waiting for me. So, you know, it's, of course, you know, mothers start hugging you and they don't want to let you go, you know. So, because um, she was really uh, concerned what, what was going to happen. Um, my other, my oldest brother, he was, he was wounded in Vietnam, you know, and I guess that weighed heavily on her mind, you know, about what's going to happen to me. But it was it was a nice welcoming home, and uh, and then all, all my nieces and nephews got around me in in the concourse there and saying, "Take me out to the ball game." <laughs> and I'm a big Cub fan, so they saying saying, "Take me out to the ball game for me." So that's special. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. That's special. What did you do um, the days and the weeks after? Oh, I just got reacquainted. Uh, you want to do so much, you know, but you realize, you know, you're home now. You slow down. Take take your time. So I was spending, spending time with my family, um, visiting old friends, hanging out. That's about it. Did you have a job right after you No, back? no, after I got out the second time, I was living with my mother and, and two, three of my brothers, I think it was at the time, and the two oldest brothers, you know, they said, go to school, you know, don't worry about bill, helping to pay for bills and everything, just go to school. So I did that. I uh, went to a community college, um, and uh, I received an associate's degree in computer information system but I was fortunate because I got offered a job to help I was I was a tutor for a while math tutor for a while and then I got offered a job uh, on a part-time basis as working with students who were having having some difficulties and then uh, one day the Dean came to me and said he had a position open uh, for a uh, Project Student Support, I believe they called it. And what it was entailed was <clears throat> going out to high schools and, and, and um, college fairs all, all over the city. So I did that, and uh, I wound up eventually being full-time, and then they changed our title to college uh, 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 counselor. So that's pretty much what I did. I did that for... Uh, up until February, I want to say 2008. Yeah, about that. So then, uh, that's that was it. Okay. And why don't you talk about some of your medals that you received? Well, the I got the Army Commendation Medal. Uh, I. I think I got three oak leaf clusters on it. Those are, instead of you having four medals, they give you one. And then if you're awarded the same medal again, they give you an oak leaf cluster to pin on it. So I had about three of those, about, I want to say at least uh, four good conducts. Um, I guess the ones that were really, uh, have the most meaning are the ones from the medal we got from Kuwait. Uh, and the one that we received uh, for uh, Desert Storm. 
those were really, really nice ones, and those are the ones that, you know, you earned it. You know, you went over and did something, you earned them, so. Okay. And I see you got some patches on your, mm -hmm. can you explain those patches? Well, this is the 1st Cavalry Division that was when I was, with, when I was over in um, Saudi Arabia. These are just commemorative, commemorative patches. Some of these are actually handmade by uh, other veterans. This one is just saying Desert Storm uh, veteran. And then I've got uh, that. So pretty much explanatory. Okay. Some people can some people um, collect the the pins. You collect patches. Um. Uh, yeah. I, I'm. I, yeah. I I've got some pins, but not a not a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want to puncture the leather with pins, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. these were all sewn sewn on. Mm -hmm. Um, did you join any um, veterans organizations? Uh, no, I was uh, part of the 1st Cavalry Division Association for about a year. That's about it. No, 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 no VFW, nothing like that. Okay. Did you um, keep in contact with any of your um, friends in the service? Well, it was about, I want to say, three years ago. I decided to go on Facebook and I get a message from someone that I was stationed with down in, in Texas. And then next thing I know, here comes another one, another one, another one. And then one of them tells me we've got our own Facebook page, uh, Alpha Company 13 Signal Battalion. So it was just a matter of just clicking that on and here comes up all the almost everybody that I served with uh, on there. So started sending messages back and forth like that. So it was good to get in touch with some people. That's neat. Yeah, that was, that was. Have you, do you think there's a lot of, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't want to say organizations, a lot of, what, what, what is the word that I want to say, um, groups or, um, uh, units okay that have Facebook page oh yes yes there's there's a lot of them at the, out there really yeah I mean you, even for World War two really yes you can go like unfortunately for my dad I, I haven't have had any success in finding his units but there are if you type in combat engineers World War II, you'll get all these different units uh, Units that'll pop up. There's, I'll be darned. Uh -huh. There's different associations and all that, you know, these are some of these people like me kept keeping contact with, you know, some of their comrades. I'll be darned. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, how has your service and experience affected your life? Well, well, reason I went in at 19 was looking for some direction and uh, I, that's one of the things I found out was uh, com, you know, the, the camaraderie. Uh, I'm kind of like, uh, how do I want to say this? Um, Oh, uh, <laughs> I have a slight case of OCD from being in the Army. Everything has to be in its place. Everything has to be in order. And so, little slight thing, but I look at it as a good thing because it, it keeps order in, in, my, in my life. So, but uh, that's about it. Okay. Would you like to share some of your pictures? Yes, ma'am. This one, this one of my father in World War II. Okay, let's, this is your father? Mm-hmm, Art Martinez.
And he was in the same unit as you were. Well, we were in the same, uh, actually both had training at the same uh, place, Fort Gordon, Georgia. But like I said, when he was in, it was called Camp Gordon, Georgia. I don't know how good this one's going to come out. That's my brother in Vietnam. And what unit was he in? He was with the Americal Division in, near Chu Lai, in Chu Lai. This is from my first tour. And where was this one at? That's uh, Fort uh, Gordon, Georgia. This one is from Fort Hood. This one This one is actually from Fort Riley, Kansas, where I went to the NCO Academy. How long were you there? Well, I forgot the training was. I think it was a couple weeks. This is me in Fort Irwin, California, in the National Training Center. This is me and this is in Saudi Arabia standing on one of the littlest p uh, patches of grass. And you can imagine the desert, no grass, and there, there it is. This is uh, me in Saudi Arabia. That's me taking a rest in Saudi Arabia. Actually, that's in Iraq. This is after it was over and before I got a chance to come home. That's in Kobar village in Saudi Arabia. And this one is me working in my communication center. This is when I re-enlisted the first time in Germany. This is me receiving a commendation from my commander in Fort Leavenworth. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to add? No, I just want to thank you for the opportunity and uh, have me here to do this I think it's worthwhile and I can't wait to see it okay well I would like to take the time and say thank you thank you for allowing me to be the one that in was able to interview okay. you and also thank you for serving our country thank you and uh,